This figures to be a great one. Lightweight final, 132 pounds. Oscar De La Hoya, the 18-year-old sensation from right here in California against Patrice Brooks, the defending Olympic Festival champion. What about Oscar De La Hoya? Boy, is he good, huh, Ray? Uh, yes, he's so professional in his uh, workmanship. I mean, he takes his time, works the body, and here, there's not too much of a difference other than 12 years for uh, De La Hoya, but there's word around, Al, that this may be an upset by Brooks. All right, we'll see. Patrice Brooks lost to De La Hoya in the U.S. Amateur Championships. He'd like to reverse it. Let's go to Danny Valdivia for our introductions. Here we go. This is a 132-pound division bout. The referee from Marina del Rey, California, Marco Sarfaraz. In the red corner, representing the South from East Los Angeles, California, Oscar De La Hoya. From St. Louis, Missouri, Patrice Brooks. Of course, the fan support here will be for Oscar De La Hoya, the youngster from Los Angeles. But uh, Patrice Brooks from St. Louis, Missouri. There you look at De La Hoya as he comes to the center of the ring. Brooks, the defending festival champion. And many, many believe, as Ray Leonard said, that uh, he could easily win this Olympic Fest gold medal again. The man you saw in that highlight that uh, De La Hoya put down was Desi Ford. That's the man he beat in the semifinals to get here. Patrice Brooks beat Teddy Randolph. Here we go. De La Hoya landing a right hand immediately. For the word out that this may be an upset by Brooks, mainly because they feel that, uh, they, some of the coaches, they feel that Brooks should be far more relaxed because he knows exactly what to expect from De La Hoya. And if he uses height and softball stance in the movement, because they, they figure that uh, De La Hoya can't move that fast because he's primarily flat-footed. And that's exactly what Patrice Brooks is trying to do here, showing De La Hoya different angles. And Oscar is a very, very much of a stand-up boxer. If someone wanted to criticize Oscar De La Hoya, you would say he's a little bit mechanical, but in the process, he throws some hard shots. I like more about uh, De La Hoya, he's very patient. I mean, he doesn't get over anxious, takes his time, and man, those big hands, those big punches, the right hand there. Halfway through round one, Patrice Brooks missing with the left hand there. Brooks trying to use those long arms of his and try to break the rhythm of Oscar. De La Hoya landing a couple of good short right hands. There you see where Brooks' movement bothered De La Hoya as he moved to his right and Oscar missed badly. You also notice that De La Hoya is not as effective. Well, I spoke too soon. I was about to say he's not too effective with the southpaw, but he got his right hand home and it was able to rock. Brooks. And there it is again and again. So the problems he had earlier in this round not plaguing De La Hoya right now. And the straight right becoming a, a big weapon in this bout. Patrice Brooks won this championship last year beating Lamar Murphy. Caution given to De La Hoya. To point something out, normally you keep your left foot on the outside of the southpaw's right foot. And with Oscar De La Hoya, he kept his foot inside, but still was able to come out on top. <laughs> Breaking all the rules, yet still effective. And normally you would want that, if you're a right-hander, your, your left foot outside the right foot of the southpaw, and you're right, look at De La Hoya not doing that, yet still able to land his right hand effectively.
And so we continue with what thus far has been a terrific 132-pound match, certainly from Oscar De La Hoya's standpoint. In that first round, he was dominating toward the end of it, even though he had some problems with Patrice Brooks in the beginning. Well, for Brooks, Brooks needs to get more angles, try to keep De La Hoya off the balance. Because being a stationary target, she's not come out on top. The left hook gets in by De La Hoya. Ray, it seems that Oscar De La Hoya lands punches that you don't think are as powerful as they are, and yet they really hurt their opponent. Well, he turns those punches over very well. I mean, he pronates that, that glove and works the body. His punches are very clean and crisp. I just like that right hand there. Good short punches as well. Doesn't waste a lot of energy. De La Hoya just takes his time. If you needed to know whether Oscar De La Hoya is for real, he's won his last three dual meet competitions against the Russians, the Canadians, and the Cubans. Not bad. Very good competition there. The opposition, that's the kind of opposition you need to be the best. Now look at those shots to the body. Good combinations by De La Hoya. De La Hoya's biggest dream and main objective is to win a gold medal in the Olympics for his mother. Because before she passed away, she said, win the gold medal. And you know what, Al? He's getting closer. He is indeed. That would be an easy task for him, but the man he's beating right now, and make no mistake, he's beating him, might be his biggest opposition to get to a chance at least to, to represent the United States in the Olympics. Look at the head movement of De La Hoya. Moves his head very well. Very good upper body movement. Under a minute left to go in round two. A round in which Oscar De La Hoya, though he's shot. taking shots there from Patrice Brooks, has uh, pretty much had his own way. Very clean punches by Patrice Brooks. In their left hand. Good body shot by De La Hoya. Brooks holds on, and he might well get a caution or a warning from Marco Sarfaretz. No. The difference here in the styles, after Brooks throws a punch or combination, he stops, and then all of a sudden De La Hoya comes on with his own attack. So toward the end of round two, Patrice Brooks does have some better moments, but is it enough to win him this round, or in the case of this electronic scoring, it's not by round, is it enough to get him closer in this bout? Good hook downstairs by De La Hoya, punctuates this second round. That'll do it for round two. So we head into round three, and Patrice Brooks, who uh, is a major in business at St. Louis Community College, better get down to business here in the third round, because he is probably behind on points to Oscar De La Hoya, and he goes right after the Los Angeles youngster. by both fighters. Right hand by Brooks and a straight left hand. You know, Ray, in some respects, while it's more dangerous, when he slugs with De La Hoya, at least Brooks can get some punches in. Well, it's a little also, more effective even in boxing there. Well, he also gained some respect because for a while, De La Hoya was not respecting him and just coming in on him. But here we see that Patrice Brooks is trying to get some respect and get some points too. The third round, good left took by De La Hoya. And a standing eight will be called by Marco Sarfaraz. I'm a little surprised there. That was really both boxers exchanging. Remember, in amateur competition, this is supposed to count as no more than one punch. Even under the new electronic scoring, I think. <laughs> well, both guys landed big punches there. And those are some solid shots by De La Hoya. Now, are we going to get another standing it? Yes, and i got to tell you, I don't believe I'm that. wondering. Marco Sarfra is a terrific official. Make no mistake about it, one of the best amateur officials there is. But I'll tell you, they were exchanging there. And you hate to see three of these end the fight for Patrice Brooks. Look at here, Alec. All of a sudden, Patrice Brooks realized he's behind on points because of 
of those warnings. Well, and uh, worse, worse than that is three of those in a round and he's out. Forget the fact that he's got the standing eight and the point, you know, they, he loses something on it. If he gets another one, they'll stop this bout. And that wouldn't be fair. It really wouldn't because Patrice Brooks is holding his own to the point where he should not be stopped. And this is a very competitive third round, even though De La Hoya is probably landing the more solid punches. There you see De La Hoya sent back by a right hook by Brooks. Oh, now he's a point from De La Hoya for holding by Marco Sarfaraz. That would mean three punches added to the total of Patrice Brooks. So round three has gotten wild here. Whether Patrice Brooks has done even close to enough to erase the margin that De La Hoya had earlier is certainly debatable, but he has held his own here in this third round. And you also see there's a lot of fight left in Patrice Brooks. Oh, yeah. Good jab by De La Hoya in the right hand. Half a minute left to go in round three, and this has really been fun. Good hook by Brooks. So the level of competition here in these finals continues to be excellent. Solid shots by both men. And as we wind down in the final seconds of round three, a point is deducted or a warning is given. Three punches will be added to De La Hoya's Total that time for holding to Patrice Brooks. Well, a wild and zany third round. Probably what it's all going to add up to is a win for Oscar De La Hoya as they hold him aloft. A performance that really wasn't a bad one for Patrice Brooks. Especially in the third round, he started to, to get some of his punches on track, but the two standing eight counts uh, did not help him any. And as you look at Oscar De La Hoya, he knows that uh, he was in there against a very tough guy, a man he had to beat in the U.S. Amateurs to win the U.S. Amateur Championship. Let's take a look back at those standing eight counts, Ray. Well, both men start to exchange some, some good punches here, and... Uh, this is questionable, debatable, rather. Well, because Brooks was landing a right hook as it happened. Now the second standing eight count. But once again, De La Hoya comes across with the left hand. But again, Brooks is in there. He's fighting. He's really uh, holding his arm. Well, the ironic part is when these standing eights were called, it ended up being Brooks who was really landing the punches. And, of course, Marco Sarfaraz, when he sees a solid blow land, thinking Brooks might be in some trouble, wants to make sure he's not hurt. But in that case... It was Patrice Brooks landing some good shots. Really an excellent performance, though, by De La Hoya. I thought it was a great performance by both fighters, Al. De La Hoya was in there, and Brooks held his own. All right, let's now let's go up and get the decision and find out who won in the 132-pound division. In the 132-pound division bout, the judges' decision, the winner on points, 44-15. In the red corner, Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya wins 44-15, but uh, you can kind of discount that. The fact is, he just was the better boxer in there, and uh, he repeats his win over Patrice Brooks, the one he had in the U.S. Amateur Championships, and he wins the Olympic Festival gold. And Charlie, had a lot of pressure on that young man, too. There were, what, 6,800 people at the forum, and there were probably 4,000 of them there to see Oscar <laughs> De La Hoya. That's tough sometimes. Oh, a very partisan crowd, very excited for him. And this was really his first major event in front of uh, his L.A. hometown. And he admitted before boxing, he admitted feeling very nervous and feeling a lot of pressure to do well in front of his family and friends. And, well, he came through. He did well. But Patrice Brooks was very tough. Once again, the disparagement in the scoring, I don't think, was really as great. I think the fight was a little bit closer than that, although I don't think there's any question in the fact that Oscar De La Hoya won. And incidentally, I was talking to some fight people. Oscar fighting at 132 pounds now, and the people that I were talking, was talking to think that as a professional, his future could be as a welterweight, 147, maybe even as much as a middleweight, getting up toward 160 before he's all done. Remember, he's only 18 years old. An Olympic gold medal he wants first, and then he'll worry about the rest of his future. But the future, indeed, for Oscar De La Hoya is a bright one. We'll be back.
because there are races. And of Korea.